I've never read that one. <laughs> Thinking about this, 
And when she was really little and she wanted to read a book, she had tons of stuffies, but she would read in this little trap. When she went, and that was her signal to me that was, she wanted to read a book. So when I was starting to choose the animal, I thought, ah, we should have a trap in it. And it's about reading, so I came up with a very weird but an uncreative name when you think of that, of reading trap. So our, my literacy program is called Reading Trap. I still go to preschools, and I also partner with the Fort Mill School District and do it as after school programs for elementary schools there, all based on picture books. So I carry Alfie around. Alfie is short for alphabet because on the marketing section, all of these are block letters, and you can see the whole alphabet across. Alfie can be a boy or a girl. Girls think Alfie's a girl, boys think Alfie's a boy. I mean, it doesn't really matter which, which Alfie is. Um, so that's how I got into this. But since my background was in creative movement, when I, when I started doing the storytelling reading, I thought, I don't want kids to just sit and listen to me. I, part of this, I want them to be active. And I want the books to be more interactive. So when I was in play ball, we were teaching them to dribble a basketball, which is kind of boring to some kids. But I was writing stories around it. So they would be making apple juice. They would take the apple, open the apple cart, use their apple smasher, smash it one, two, three times, and squeeze the juice out. Now, if you say I'm going to dribble a basketball, the little athletes and sports guys will love it. We're going to say we're going to make apple juice and try to get more of the kids into it. So we think, I think kids should be active. So when I started doing reading track, I reversed that process. And now I have all the stories. Instead of I had games and I made stories for it. Now I have stories. And I said, I need to make games for these stories. So every class, the kids play at least one game, um, either at the middle or the end. Depends on how fidgety they are, too, right? So I want to show you a few things that we did today. We don't have a lot of time. I'm going to try to go through several mechanisms I try to use to make books interactive and also active. And when I ask for volunteers, there's some prizes a couple times, so just in case you're shy about them. Oh, and you have to have, you know, props that are partially entertaining. So this is Talking Alfie. So all the kids get to feed Talking Alfie, and they know what he likes at the beginning when I'm taking roll. And then they get at the end of class, which everybody is entitled to. Everybody, I don't want anybody to be empty-handed, so you can get an Alfie stamp if you'd like on the back. Very, very valuable stuff. <laughs> so, all right, let's go through, and by the way, you can take notes if you want. I have an outline, but if you want to email me afterwards, I can give you a list of every game we do today, every interactive thing, and every book that goes with it. And so you don't have to worry about taking notes, and you can get up and participate more. Let's start with these. We'll start sort of easy and sort of move into more and more active things. And all of these books are also a lot of my favorite books as well. So I, will, I also can send a list I have of like, 75 or 100 books, and I'll tell you which ones are Carolina authors as well. This is an old classic. Do you guys know this one? Yes. My favorite, well, I don't know why they didn't make more, because publishing is like other things. Once there's something popular, everybody, I don't know why they didn't make more, you know, a lot more. This didn't become a whole section. Um, but this one, what we'll start with is just call and response to kids. So we'll go over. So what I'll tell the kids, we're going to read the book, and your job, once we get to the first half, again, we have in, in reading draft, I might cover two books and a game because we use the what's called the whole book approach. So the kids are analyzing every page, every illustration. They're allowed to ask all the questions they want, which sometimes goes you know kind of far astray and have to reel them back in. But we're going to do the opposite today. We don't have time. You know, we would only cover two or three books, and we have fifteen. So we're going to do these really quickly and just hit the interactive or the active parts. So once we get towards the end, and basically the book, in case you don't know, makes this really cool monster with cutouts. And then, after it makes the entire monster, we're going to say, go away. You don't, it said, you don't scare me, so go away. So when I point to you, you're going to say, go away. Make it loud so the, the neighbors think that we're having a better time than they are. Okay. <laughs> and a big scary face, but you don't scare me, so go away. Purple scraggly hair. Oh, I'm going to show you a little, I'll throw in little secrets, I guess. I do a secret page turn on these type books. What I do is I close, to make it a little more magical, I close the page, stick my finger in, and then open it. So they don't see the page turn, so to speak, and, you know, especially preschoolers, which I'm now sort of half preschool, half elementary. They're like, ooh, magical. <laughs> so, um, and then we have to say, Go away! Two squiggly little ears. Magic page turn. All right, so we would keep going, go away. So that's just a simple getting the kids active. And one last one just for good measure. Go away! Excellent, excellent. Oh, I, just, I didn't do that on purpose, but that leads me to my next book, which is called Excellent Ed. Um, so we talked about read and response. This is acting out. 
kids love to act out books. And there's a couple of ways we're going to go through this. The first one, what I do, I look for books that have lots of characters. Excellent Ed is by Stacey McAnulty, who's a Carolina author. She also has, if you have any middle, she has great middle school books. Lightning Girl is maybe the most famous one. She's got all these series on the Earth and the Sun and Mars and Pluto, I think now. Um, so if you're looking for interesting nonfiction, Stacy is great. She's in the Raleigh area. All right. So what I do, some books I will take the time to actually take pictures and make them pictures. But here, you can see they've been used recently. All I do is just cut out the people's names. There's why this one's good. There's Edith and Ernie and Elaine and Elmer, who's, twin, who's a twin, with Emily. And there's Ed, the dog. So Ed is the star of the book. So that is where you want to do is have the star. You, you pick someone who you think will really, who's really creative and wants to do it, and they can be the, the star of this book. Um, and each one does different things. For example, um, let's go and see some of the active things. Elaine is a soccer player, so they can pretend to play soccer again. Kids are much more imaginative than that, so if Elaine's there and they came in, Elaine was an excellent soccer player. Ed prepared to carry the ball in his mouth. So Ed gets everything. So Elaine would come in, the soccer player, Ed carries the ball in his mouth, Ed would pretend to do that. The twins, Elmer and uh, Emily and Elmer, were excellent at math. They could ask add faster than a calculator. So you could add, ask the kids to add some numbers based on where they are. So integrate a little math there. With my statistics background, I love math. Ed could only count to four. Ed is upside down. And then you ask, why can Ed only count to four? Yeah, you have to, yeah, so you show, this is one of those where you have them come up because it's not intuitively obvious until you start, and so you see the illustration. Edith was an excellent ballerina. Do we have any dancers in here? Oh, good, good, wait, I am tired, good, good. It's gonna come in handy later. Any singers? Singers? Uh, okay. <laughs> Anybody who's going to just think about what talent you have, because we're having a talent contest soon. So think about talent contests. And again, there are prizes. So. All right. So we have a ballerina, so that's something good. Oh, Ernie baked cupcakes. Ed agreed. Ed steals a cupcake. And then we have, um, so each person has their own talent. So it's a nice way to get multiple kids, because you can have five. Oh, when, um, when Stacy first wrote this, she had 11 kids, and her publisher had her cut it down to like seven, and then finally she ended up with five, plus Ed. All right, now, that, so that is kind of an individual. We have, like we might call it five or six kids, and they're gonna act out, and the rest are sort of cheering on and things. Then you can have the whole group act out, sort of taking it to the next level. Um, so you could have them, and it's, you could have them all dance. You could have them all pretend to play soccer. It's a little more hectic, and some books were better than others, but that's another, another way you can do it. So I'm going to ask for volunteers. We're actually going to read through this book. I mean, those, these ants, some underpants. One thing I tell you always do, it's a little tougher once you have your books in your library binding, but you can kind of turn them out inside out. One of my favorite things, one of the kids' favorite things, is looking under the jacket. And they're officially called the Undies, and they have the Undies Award every year with the best under. So this one is pretty cool. <laughs> I, have, I, I posted recently on, on uh, my, my reading draft thing, I did this and I just had a video running, and the kids just screamed and squealed, so I had a great reaction for that. So we are going to ask for volunteers. Volunteers who are coming. Who? Which are my volunteers? Before I start, you. Oh, there's one already. Putting your her paper and paper down. The volunteer. Good. Other volunteers. Come on up, volunteers. Come on up, volunteers. And I'm not sure how. There's lots of characters in this book, so you get lots of opportunities. Volunteers. Volunteers. Good. 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 Ah, excellent. And there's still the talent test contest coming up, so don't forget. Okay. This is just an acting out. So what we'll do is what I would sometimes do if I went through is either, since these are not, I could either put names or I could just, I literally will take, go, uh, take snapshots and then put them on little pieces of paper and so they can see their characters. So there's different ones. You're going to see, like I would 
have a pirate and octopus and various things. All right. And then there's sort of a surprise at the end of this book. So we'll go through, oh, this is one of my favorite parts of this book. Here are the front end papers, which I teach my kids, end papers. And we'll see what the end end papers look like at the end. All right, are my actors ready? Oh, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Um, and we go through, I do the end papers for them. We do the, what's this called? Where I'm dedicating the book. <laughs> Dedication page. Um, and then this is the title page. And at the bottom is the company that printed the book, which is a? Sure, sure. good, good. So even my, so my, um, we do a lot before we even get into the book. We look at the front cover. Back cover, spine. spine, and I have the kids do it. Everybody do a spine check. Be good for the video. Yeah, we have the kids do a spine check. Make sure they have a spine that's in the center of them, just like it's in the center of the book. We do the sneak peek <laughs> under the jacket. They love now. They all, hey, let's look under the jacket. So, um, and we do the end papers, dedication page, title page, publisher, oh, author, illustrator. Sometimes there's only one. So they're learning ten things about the book before we even started the book. And you have them. You can always ask them to anticipate what's next. What can you tell me about the story based on this or the back cover? So you can have them start thinking about the story before you get into it. And then the title page usually includes an illustration. It goes along with there's the ants. All right. Are we ready? We'll start. Are you guys kind of lying shoulder to shoulder? So you're one, two, three, four. So I can just any more last chance volunteers. There's there's. There's a prize at the end. Oh, volunteer, thank you. Come on up. I see your hand up. You may have just been scratching your head, I saw a hand up. Come on, two, four, six, eight. All right, I think we need um, one more volunteer here, uh, one more volunteer here, and one in the back. I think we have about 12. Oh, and the girl next to the one who was, yes, happy that you wanted. All right, you guys can do And if we run out of characters, we'll just loop around and start with one again. And this is a book about sharing. It's got a healthy undertone and healthy theme. All right. It's rhyming. I love rhyme. My mom brought home a gift for me. I bounded down the stairs, then opened up a box and found new underpants, six pairs. Ooh. And it's six. It's a family pack. And it's, you think, we're under seven for every day of the week. To make six, to make the rhyme work, we have a weekend pair. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Thursday, yeah, there's Thursday. Good. All right. Thanks, Mom, but what about my friends? I bet they love some too. Well, dear, I don't think those will fit. I knew just what to do. So here's the sharing element. I gathered up my art supplies and did some calculations, then cut and colored trimmed and taped to craft my cool creations. There he is in his room. And what's neat about this book, everything has just tons of Easter eggs. Things that are hidden by the illustrator that you won't notice the first time and you can go back through the book with the kids again. So this is what you can already see are things on the wall and things in his room and such. That's a hint at what's going to be coming. Oh, this is a this one we'll skip because it's not too exciting. I made the first pair for my sis and hung them on her door. Then sat back down and got to work. I had to make some more. Sis is mortified with sis and friend, and brother making underpants for sis. All right, are you ready? Is our first one? Oh, you, oh, we need two for this one. You can be two or three. Let's make it three. I made some for a line of ants. Go ahead. It's going to be quick. Just walk away across the room. They stuffed them in their nest. Oh, good, good. Now you can stay over there. Good. I made some for a pirate. Arr. He hid them in his chest. <laughs> we are being videoed, so that will be fun. But I probably should have you. I think this is the video. I didn't just thought about it. She blocked us. That was on purpose. I haven't heard a lot of things coming. A lot of things when I'm reading books. 
I made some for an octopus. Oh my god. He had six legs too many. <laughs> there you go. Oh, there you go. They're tag teaming. Tag teaming. Oh, by the way, you guys are going to be judges. Be <laughs> judges. I made some for a snake, although she had no legs, not any.
Yeah, the giant is, is scaring you. All right, a few more here. Oh, I made some for an astronaut. There she is. She blasted into space. <laughs> and there's another Easter egg here from a previous book that's called Does a Bulldozer Have a Butt? <laughs> One of them is an alien that has three cheeks, and the alien is in the spaceship here in this book. It's the same, same creative team that did it. Oh, so I made some for an astronaut. She blasted into space. Let's see if you guys can get this one. I made some for a skeleton. His jaw dropped off his face. face. Where's my skeleton? Oh, good. Here comes a skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the funnier drawings. The jaw is dropping off her face. <laughs> so. I made some for a cowgirl. Cowgirl. Yeah, imagine, she tried to rope and ride them. Exactly. Look, <laughs> you're roping and riding them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this one I'm ready for. This is, my, one of, this is my favorite verse, perhaps. I made some for a zombie. Love zombies. Okay, so let me see if you can figure out this one. Okay, zombie. Right, good. Hold it there. I made some for a cowboy, but he tried to rope, rope and ride them. I made some for a zombie, but her legs came off inside <laughs> them. <laughs> good, good, excellent, Zom excellent zombie work. And there's her legs literally off. My my daughter now watches The Walking Dead, and I'm mean, thinking that is some gory stuff in there. But this is like kid version. But there's the legs off. All right, good. Ah, oh, I only have room for one more. Who is That's going okay. to be the star? That's okay. I'm arranged. So okay. I thought my friends would like their gifts. They didn't seem to care. So, if underpants are optional, then I don't need a pair. And now when you look at his room, you see all of the things that were his friends, were his stuffies and his toys and his games and on his wall and then on his calendar. So the kids can go all through and pick those out. Excellent. All of everybody here are around the wall. Thank you, and we have to pick a winner from all of this. Does anybody have picks? Pirate. 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 Well, I'm supposed to two people. Yes. Pirate. Pirate. All right, where's our pirate? Yes. Pirate. Yes. Pirate. Yes. pirate. And the surprise gift is one reason I know so much about this book is because it's one of mine. I wrote it. I'm not. So I'm going to sign for you at the end. characters, you all could have been pirates and things. Um, this book is one that combines what we just did. Call and response for the whole auditorium and some oops, about five or so or six parts to act out. These actually cut out. You see, I put I put the name and I took a picture from the book and made so that's a good girl. So there's like six and it has a <laughs> And so it has like six parts, and what it does is, what I set up for this one, is every time, um, and you can divide the auditorium, if it's a bigger one, I do this for keynotes, you can have like, okay, from you over, here's one third, you guys to the middle, and from you over is that third. So, anytime, anytime I say deep dark woods, you guys are gonna say, dun dun dun, deep dark woods. <laughs> When I say sweet little girl, you're going to say, aww. Aww. And when I say big bad wolf, you're going to say, aww. Oh. 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 Excellent. So, <clears throat> this goes through the whole book, and we don't have time to go through the whole book. You get an idea every time. There's, it says several times, for example, do a quick one there, one page. And then we have, as characters, we have a witch, a troll, a giant, a little girl, a wolf. Look, here comes a sweet little girl. Aww. What is she doing in the deep dark woods? <laughs> doesn't she know it's dangerous? Oh no, the big bad wolf! Oh. Has seen her. This doesn't look good. So the whole book is like that. So that's a combination. Feedback and you can divide up and six characters to act out. Good. Little 
little bit closer. Let me see which one. Ah, this one, sometimes kids need just a break in the middle of a book, right? They're sitting there, and you can see the kid dance or whatever. So what I also do, I, I do, um, I call it a page break, because that's a, a term. Page break in the book is where you change the page. But a page break for this one, it works well if you have, I love nature, so I usually do animals. But what you can do in this book, it's a little, it's a little owl that gets lost. He falls out of his tree, bum, 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 bum. And then he describes, mom, are you okay? Ask squirrel, I'm lost. Where's my mummy? Don't worry, little friend, I'll find your mummy. What does she look like? And he goes on to describe her. My mummy is very big like this, said the little owl. Yes, yes, I know, said squirrel, follow me. There is your mummy. So he takes the description, and one has long ears, so he makes it a rabbit and all these. So, but what this is great for, if you see the class getting antsy about now, you can say, okay, class, okay, everybody stand up. No, you can do it too, stand up. And we'll stomp like bears, so you have to stomp. Through the class. And then we read a little more, you can say standing, no, 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 my mommy has pointy ears like this. Ah, yes, yes, I know, said squirrel, follow me. Here she is, here's your mummy. And then what are we gonna do? Then they would all, or they could all hop like bunnies. All right, so this is a great book, and there's others that have different animals that you can pretend. It's just to get them, you know, moving, to get that little antsiness out, and, now, and then you have them sit back down. Makes, makes sense? This is my favorite, one of my all-time favorites, the monster at the end of this book, classic. So what we're gonna hit on now are some games, a few games you can play, I'm gonna take. Right, and you can redo, reuse these games in many different ways. Um, if it's a monster, one of our kids' all-time favorites is Midnight Monster. And um, it's also, I've heard also called What Time Is Mr. Fox? So, um, where am I? Oh, there are my volunteers sitting at this end. They're standing up. No, you get to stand. You get the opportunity to stand up. That's I think what you meant, right? <laughs> All right. And you're going to have them ask, what time is it? And I'm going to tell them what time it is, and how, whatever time I say, that's how many steps they take. If I say it's 3 o'clock, they go 1, 2, 3, okay. and they're going to get closer and closer. When I say it's midnight, I come out of my midnight monster, and I chase them back to where they're safe at home in their house. So, what do you ask? What time, what time is it? It is 3 o'clock. And what do you ask? What time is it? We'll make this go quickly. It's 5 o'clock. Good. And what do you ask? What time is it? It's 1 o'clock! <laughs> Becoming one of the kids almost, right? You kind of have to think on their level sometimes. All right, and what time is it? <laughs> it's midnight. Now they go back and they chase them out. Hey. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Okay, Unfortunately, we don't have a book to give <laughs> Which brings us to our talent portion of our conference show. <laughs> who, like to, who has talent? Who is ready to show them down before I call on them as volunteers to have Oh, there's a talent. Come on up, come on up. Talent people, come on up. If you can sing, dance, uh, do a push-up, I don't know, a uh, cartwheel. It's you, yeah, I don't know. If you can recite a poem, if you can, I don't know. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a little bit of fun with the talent portion of our
big applause for everyone. Yeah. All right, we have our first singer, Rebecca. We have our RSPCT. We have, we have flexibility. Flexibility, sorry. Flexibility. Yay. And we have weird alien sound. So Weird Alien Sound is going to be one. I have two books to give away. These are from Tara Lube, who's another author who lives in Fort Mill with me. They are signed by Tara. It's I Am Famous and I Used to Be Famous. When we wrote these books, well, we, we write, we help each other's critique partners. So she's critiqued all mine, I've critiqued all hers. So this one was before I was published. So she gave me, she goes, did you read it? I was like, yeah. Did you read all of it? Yeah, did you read it? Are you sure? And then I realized the dedication page was dedicated to me and the other person who helped her write it. So you get two copies of Sign That. And where's our RESBCT? Yeah. It's also signed copies from Tara. So you can take care of those. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Let's put, oh, dinosaurs are always good. This is one of the best books ever also recently. Very funny, very lovely, and the, we don't eat our classmates. One of the best titles ever. Um, probably one of my favorite titles, because before this came out, was I really like to eat a child, which is another fun book. I like subversive type books where things get eaten like that. Very funny. Um, there's different types. So what kids do love doing is play tag. And tag, you can change a, a bunch of different ways. For example, zombie tag. Zombie tag, you have kids lined up on this side. I, I, I try to get either the gym or an outdoor location whenever I do reading giraffe. So we can do the, the reading part and we have some, I like to have some space like in a media center or we use an art room in one because it's cleared out in the center. So we can do little interactive things. And then we take outside to do our, our big game. And a lot of them are games of tag. The key is you change the story and it seems different than the week before. <laughs> but they're pretty much the same thing. Zombie tag, one option. So. You can start out as the zombie. Oh my gosh. And the kids are over here. And the kids try to run from one town to the other town. I also, none of these really take, like this <laughs> monster face, no equipment. A lot of these have just cones are great to have. They're really cheap. You can, you can line off areas. Oh, where do we stand in case they're not? Okay, good. Your town is right between these cones and back there. And then you're trying to make it all the way over and you can make Maybe four. You're much, you'd make a bigger square. But here's the town over here, a rectangle that you're trying to make it into. And then I'm the zombie. And as they take off, I am a good zombie. And everyone I tag becomes a zombie the next round. And then if you want, you can make that dinosaur tag. Everyone becomes a dinosaur the next round. So anything that you can chase them, or they like Midnight Monster, you're chasing them. Sometimes I'll have kids join as Midnight Monster. If they get, if they get caught, they can join. Depends on the age group, right, and, and how much you trust kids chasing and tagging someone else. Um, but the zombie tag is one, and this is one of my favorite books for zombie tag, Zombie in Love. It's a great, because you can read it anytime, but it's also a, if you want something a little different for Valentine's Day. And there's a couple of these. Really cool. All right. So think tag of different types. There's also some games that you can play really easily. If everybody asks a lot of people ask, like, if you're an author, what's your favorite book ever? For picture books, this is my favorite book ever. Tadpole's Promise. And it's good because not a lot of people have heard about it. Gene Willis is a British author. And it's just brilliant. It's great for spring. It's great for anything, but it's really great for spring. And since it's my favorite, you might guess it has a very, subver be the best subversive ending I've ever seen because the kids literally go, oh. So if you want the kids to go, oh, that's a good thing. Um, so it, it's about a tadpole and caterpillar, so the tadpole becomes frog, caterpillar becomes. So, if you, another nice and expensive thing if you want the kids to be after, or bandanas. These are now butterflies. You're teaching them the proper way to hold, crumple up, hold, one, two, three, throw the butterfly up, track it, track it, track it, as you can in two hands. If they're a little bit easier, then you can change it, toss up, catch in one hand, throw, or you get fancy, toss and catch it behind your back. So. That was a short. So, and a lot of times I miss those, but you try to do those, you practice some of these things for the kids. Um, and then you have a contest, because I like having contests with the elementary school kids. You always have to throw a little bit of competition. How high can you throw it? And here's the key. Wrap it around your finger. And then it's 
the smallest ball. And then you can even hit those with it. Um, so bandanas are good. The other thing they love to do, our, our favorite game, is hit the coach. So <laughs> if you're playing, say these can be butterflies, or in the wintertime, they could be snowballs. Or in the spring, they could be falling leaves, right? So here's, I'm going to show you one quick game. I need a um, beetle against this one. Come on up since you're too close. And you're going to stand right here, like one, two, three. There we go. And good. And demonstrate. And you're going to stand shoulder to shoulder, like this, face this way. Good. And scoot on over. Scoot on over. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. And there you go. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> and here's how Hit the Coach works. Very simple. They love playing with the coach. So now we're going to teach them um, an overarm baseball throw. You know, put your hand up. Do a quick, quick lesson in case you're not clear. One, put it by your ear. Two, take your opposite foot and point where you're going to throw it. And three, you're just going to throw it. Don't throw it. Let me check your feet. Go ahead and just point. Point. Don't point. There you go. Up by your ear. Up your ear. Good, good, good. All right. So then, what are you going to do? I'm going to run through, and they're going to get to hit me with their snowballs or whatever. That's why we have bandanas. Right? <laughs> I do this with, I, I do footballs with nurse, but, and I'm the only one that runs through. I don't send my other coaches, but some of those kids, they get to be second grade, and they are firing those balls, and they fire them at your head. Are you ready? <laughs> and so I'm, I, you make it fun. Is it ready, set, and go. <laughs> Good. Oh, 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 nice. Oh, All right. So that is hit the coach. Thank you. <laughs> so we have tags. We have versions of catching butterflies. Um, we don't have time to read it, but this is the prequel I was saying to the other book. This is um, K. Fi and I wrote this book. Does the bulldozer have a butt? Um, I was worried when all the book banning came about, but so far, actually, I was just hoping it would get banned because those books take off in sales. <laughs> so, like, please, please, put me on, put me on the nightly news. You know, somebody banned me, or some politician said I was corrupting children. Um, but sadly, that has not happened yet. But there's an assistant principal who got fired for reading I Want a New Lot. And um, I'm out. So what I did when I, I heard and we became friends on Twitter, so I sent him a signed copy of this, so he could oh, potentially really? get fired all over again. <laughs> um, oh, I did show you. Oh, because I don't have it now. These are my favorite. Oh yeah, what do we have to do always? This is in my contract. All my books. This book was written and is based in San Francisco. The illustrator lives there. Levi's is one of the first San Francisco companies that was founded there. Has in papers all these things. And I'll show you, I forgot to show you the end papers on that book. They have underpants on all the things there. This is the back side to all of this. All right. We are, we're almost out of time. I, I knew this would go by fast with only 45 minutes. Um, let me show, go over quickly, quickly, quickly things. Craft runs, if you're doing crafts. Let me show you two of my favorite crafts that take no money, almost, and not much effort. One of the books that changed the industry, yeah. talking about those, right? Have them make their own. Take a piece of paper, cut it into fourths, staple it. They now have a book. Go to Office Depot or wherever, buy it, or stars, or even stickers. And they take these and they make their own book. They love doing it. They do this during summer camp. I have to write press here on each of these, and then they'll read me the book and say what it does. Um, but they don't even have to write press here. You can just cut it into fourths. I found that to be a fun little easy project to do. Um, Wide Mouth Frog, one of my other favorite, maybe my favorite pop-up book ever. Paper plate, buy these by the dozens. And googly eyes if you need for extra. Take the paper plate, I one of my kids, color it like a frog. If you have the extra, you, you put on the googly eye, you fold it in half, Got a little X here is what makes it special. You stick this through the X, and <laughs> there's their tongue. So that is probably the kid's favorite easy one to take, take home. So again, very cheap, literally by paper plates by the hundred. These, I think, pack of 72. Googly eyes if you want, crayons you have, and scissors. Last thing we'll show you because you, I don't want to keep you guys late. They have lots of these. There was an old lady who swallowed something, which are pretty clever. What I'll do is I'll take it, I'll print out, I'll find it either a PDF or take a picture, print it out on one side. 
This one is leaves with fall. So I got a pair of my daughter's favorite jeans from when she's three. She's now in ninth grade. Um, and her favorite shirt from back then. And some hay and some leaves and a rope. And I hand it out to the different people. And they come in and they feed. They throw it in the bag. Whoops, this side. And then at the end, you turn it around and show them what they had made. So it's another way just to get kids involved. And so I have these little bags set up for a lot of these different books. So they can do it in the snow. You have, you know, fake snowflakes and corn cob pipe and all of those things. Um, and just so you don't think I only write potty humor, because I don't really like potty humor that much, but here's my first book that I wrote. This was a Margaret Weiss Brown honor book for 2021 and was on two best of books list. We have book under. This one I'll tell you, it's about a dog and a little girl. And it's the dog's 